Okay, <clears throat> the characteristic we have uh, the one stick uh, fundamental qualitative characteristic. Fundamental, if you look at next page, we have enhancing qualitative characteristic. So we start with fundamental first. Means uh, our financial statement must have this characteristic. It's a fundamental characteristic. So what are they? First one, relevant. Relevant means here. Yeah, capable of making a difference in the decision of the user. Making a difference in the decision of the user. Able to influence you. Okay. And uh, financial info information is capable of making a difference is when we have got this one. Number one, predictive. Number two, confirmatory value or both. So I summarize it here. Relevance means capable of making a difference. In the decision of the user. And capable of making a difference means it is what? It has got predictive. Confirmatory value. Or both. Relevance are uh, information that is capable of making a difference. Capable of making a difference means it has got predictive, it has got complementary value, or both. We have six examples. Predictive value. Um, predictive value. Sorry. Okay. Our financial statement, two thousand and eighteen. We also have two thousand seventeen. Okay. Saves. And all the way here is my profit. If my profit is 100, I put it wrong, sorry. 100. Can we predict 2019? Okay, we can predict. So, how much you want to predict? 120. If, if, uh, if it, the business is, I mean, economy is good, we may want to predict 150. You may also predict 80, 70. So uh, the prediction, the gap or the range is, can be increased or reduced. Uh. Okay, now. So what if uh, I were to add in a comparative figure here of 70? Last year, 70. So would you want, and this year is about 100. And this company is selling this product here, uh, which is actually quite popular. So do we foresee an increase in profit next year? Yes. So last year, 70. This year, 100. We will predict probably higher if the trend continues. We won't predict lower. So with this $70 here, so our prediction, the gap will be lesser, right? Narrower. Just now without the 70, it could be higher, it could be lower. And higher by how much? Not sure. But here 70, here 100, then of course we will predict 120, 130, 150. So will this enhance your prediction? Yes. By including last year's figure, it has got predictive value. Good characteristic by adding last year's figure. Okay, no? So this is one example. Knowing that our financial statement is all about uh, old data, old information, last year information, last two year information. So when we mention predictive future, huh, is it possible? Yes. Okay, by just adding a competitive figure. Secondly, this is my sales. 
this is my other income, which is gain on disposal. Jody, gain on disposal, um, 600. So income, income. We know our presentation is, this is my, I sell tables and chairs. So tables and chairs, revenue from tables and chairs. This one is my gain or loss on uh, a piece of land. Both are income. So predict next year's income total. My total income for 217 is um, one six. Predict next year's income? Two, total. Two. I mean, prediction is not right or wrong, but you predict two, okay. <laughs> but when you make a prediction, so would you want to base on the total or you want based on the sales only? Sales only, right? Okay, now why? Because this gain or loss on disposal on a piece of land and is this a recurring or do we have damage that many lands? I'm not sure. Even we have, are we going to make this much of profit? So this one is not recurring. This one is recurring. So when you want to predict our income, we should base more on this uh, main income here, which is our sales. So it could be 1.2, 1,002, 1,003, Okay, rather than total up as 1,006. That's why our financial statement we split into main income, revenue, main activity, and others. We have predictive value. Okay, now, so we have two examples by adding compacted figure by splitting these two income. <clears throat> okay, earlier we mentioned six example, two example done. I'll give you the other two, but it's not over there yet, not in the notes. Huh? I'll show you this particular standard. FRS 5. Recording, that's how this works. Okay, I find fine. So this standard, which is a non-current asset help for sale, this quantity operation, we learn that later. But the presentation is like this. Non-current asset help for sale. Okay, non-current asset is a PPE. And help for sale means we have the intention to sell. If we meet the criteria, this non-current asset will be classified under current asset because we plan to sell. We're going to sell it within 12 months. So from a non-current, we classify as current. If we meet the criteria, we must do that. So now, if we are the user, when we transfer the <coughs> transfer the current asset, this amount, as a user, can we now predict that this particular asset will be sold within 12 months? Yes. If we do not reclassify from non-current to current, we will thought that we will think that eh, this asset will continue to use for more than one year. Five. Classifying them as current, we know that this one will be sold within one year. So predict the value, we can predict. Will be sold within one year. So this is example number three. Okay, I will repeat again when we come to this standard. We try to link to predict value. Non-current transfer to current. This same standard here. In our SPL. We have a uh, discontinued an operation. Okay, now example, I stop an operation in Sabah, stop. So all the people there, I will, I will have to retrench them. Operation stop. Okay, now, or it can be because I sell cat, I sell t-shirt, I stop producing cat. I stop the operation. So we will then split them into continuing operation as well as discontinued operation. Okay, let's say this one is on the Sarawak operation. I already stopped. So this one is my continuing operation. I make a profit of 96. This continuing operation already discontinued and I make a loss 30. That's why I discontinue. And overall profit is 66. So I classify as continuing and discontinued profit, profit. So 
total profit made is 66. Predict next year's profit should be based on continuing. Because this one I say already discontinued, it won't happen again, the losses. So we should predict based on 96, the continuing operation. Okay, so this particular standard, we got two uh, examples. One is non-current, become current, and operation classified as continuing as well as discontinuing. Okay, so the standard requires to be Six example. First one comparative figure two eighteen to seventeen. Second one split the income. Third one is your non-current, classified as current. SPR will be continuing and discontinued, for example. And uh, fifth example later, sixth example even later. Okay, four first. Confirmatory example, uh, confirmatory value is, uh, if you look at last year's figure, it has been audited. 2018, it has been audited. As a user, we know it has been audited by the auditors. And uh, this value, we can say that it's confirmed. It has been confirmed by the auditor, signed. Rather than this value here, it's, a, it's unaudited. Means some of this figure is not confirmed, so can we rely? Not so. If it's audited one, means this figure here are confirmed. So we have confirmatory value here. Is it okay? So the, so we have complementary and we have predictive value. So this one, these two value here will make a difference to the decision of the user. Means this decision is relevant. Uh, a simple example, of course, this one is based on the definition here. A simple example is, with my financial statement, I show uh, last year or last week's football result. Yeah, your decision is to whether to invest in this company. And I show here football's result. Is it relevant to you? Yes. Not relevant, no quality. So, got, re, is relevant to the user means you have got quality to the user. Uh, quality financial services. Okay. And uh, materiality is also one of the characteristics of relevant. As in, my financial statement, I disclose the company suffer from losses because due to a flood, and the company lost about $20. Is $20 relevant uh, material? No. no. $20 uh, losses is actually occurred. But $20 is not material. Therefore, not relevant to the user. Okay? So that's why you have materiality here. Okay? So this is the fundamental. It has to be relevant. Secondly, faithful representation. Three. Uh, four, uh, behind another, another one, substance over form. So these three, very quickly, faithful representation. I have many, many users, and we have to be faithful to the user, means our financial statement must be faithfully represented, means the information must be complete. 100%. If I got a lot of bad news, let's say 80% positive news. 20% negative news. Can I hide this 20%? I'm not telling lie, just I'm hiding it. Cannot because it's not complete. Means I'm not faithful to the user. Faithful representation. Same thing, neutral. I have many, many, many users, banker, customer, uh, employee. So I should not be biased. When I prepare this report, should not be biased towards anybody. It has to be neutral. And of course, it has to be free from error. Financial statement that is full of error, no quality. Okay. So CNF, complete neutral free from error. 
And of course, we have the substance of form as well. You heard of this term, right? No. Never? Voila. No. Anyway, important terms. Very, very important. Substance over form. I keep some space here because I'm going to give you an example. Okay. First example is redeemable preference share. 10% uh, redeemable preference share capital. 10,000. Ten percent loan. Important. Commercial substance of form is the commercial substance and economic reality over their legal form. Okay, the substance over their legal form. So we don't look at the legality, we look at the substance. So what do we mean by that? I need 10,000, I can actually issue share. I need 10,000, I can borrow. Okay, now, so over here, if I need 10,000, I can borrow 10,000, in which I pay 10% interest. So is this asset liability income expenses? This ten thousand, it is a liability. Yeah, it is a liability, and we have to pay uh, one thousand interest expenses. Okay. Forget about redeemable. Forget about redeemable first. Preference share capital, like what you asked earlier. Preference share capital, we have to pay a fixed dividend, right? How much is my dividend? 10% dividend. Okay, not? So, by definition, this is a liability and we have ordinary share. Ordinary share is equity. Preference share? Equity. By definition, it is equity. We have a share here, preference share ordinary share so equity. So, the implication, equity and liability. In our SFP, yeah, Equity, you know, we have A minus L equals to E, right? So, if it's equity, it means you're going to increase our equity, right? So, is it going to improve? You heard, you heard the gearing ratio? Gearing ratio is our debt ratio. It's actually debt divided by equity, right? Okay. So, if my debt, my equity increase, gearing ratio will up or down. If I issue share, issue share, equity, yeah, means I've got a lot of equity, share this one. My gearing will reduce. Good. Okay, now, so prep equity will have to improve my gearing. What happens if it's the debt liability? It will increase. So this will increase my gearing. This will reduce my gearing. So if you are the company, you need 10,000. You can issue loan note. You can issue preference share 10. And we're going to pay 1,000, 1,000. So of course, most of us will go for equity because it's going to improve our gearing okay no? so by applying substance over form we have three similar characteristics here redeemable okay now i am redeemable it can be irredeemable redeemable means today i issue preference share i redeem it irredeemable means issue already cannot redeem it. okay so keyword is redeemable first Characteristic, similar characteristic is both has got no voting rights. Loan no holder cannot vote in my company. Reference share cannot holder cannot vote. Number two, redeemable has got a fixed dividend. This one has got a fixed interest. Oh yeah, one more difference here. Interest, it is an expenses. Dividend. Dividend, we pay dividend. We call this distribution, not expenses. Meaning, if you look at um, chapter one, no, not one, you know.
if interest it is here it will affect our profit therefore our tax profit for the year but it is dividend we don't see it here you see in your statement of changes right so dividend is called a distribution back to our shareholders so it won't affect our profit so when you apply substance form i mean when it's redeemable parent share preference share Dividend won't affect our profit, so our profit will improve. This one will affect our profit, our profit will drop. Okay, now, so you can see the benefit of issuing preference share. And the fact that we issue redeemable preference share, number three, similar characteristic number three, loan I borrow assuming five years, it will be repayable in five years. Borrow 10, must pay back 10. The fact that it's redeemable means today I take 10,000 from my shareholder. I will pay them back in the future. 10,000 redeemable in the future. <coughs> Can you see we have three similar characteristics? Okay. So we call it redeemable preference share, which has similar characteristics as a loan. Therefore, by applying substance over form, in substance, Redeemable preference share is a loan taken from the preference shareholder in which we will pay a fixed dividend and it will be repaid in assuming five years time. It has got the same characteristic as loan. Borrow today, pay 1,000 interest, repayable in five years time. Therefore, by applying substance of form, this one will be treated as liability. Dividend will be treated as finance cost. Understand? Must. No matter what you call it, the substance is a loan taken. It must be treated as a liability. Hence, the dividend will be treated as finance cost. So, uh, your SFP normally is ordinary share. Of course, uh, sorry, your non current asset. Current asset at the bottom here, we got equity, right? Normally, you got ordinary share, preference share. But because it's treated as liability, non-current liability, it will be 10% redeemable preference share capital 10,000. We still call redeemable. But the characteristic we put it under non-current liability. It is still called dividend, but it's part of finance cost. Okay. So we have many, many examples on substance over form. This is one of the easiest. So uh, one more example here, <clears throat> we will learn that in FRS 16, lease. So I simplify it, okay, we don't go into detail because this one standard by itself. So what happened is, this is the lessor, the bank, we call them the lessor, and this is the, this is you, the company, the VC. Let's all lease it. Lease money, lah. Lease, uh, lend money, yeah. And this is the third party. Means the car, let's say a car retailer. So you need money, and right? you need a car. So what happens is you go to this bank. It can be anybody, lah. Okay, normally it's a subsidiary of a bank. So what happens is the arrangement is such that bank will buy the car. The lessor uh, rather than the bank. Uh, we call it the lessor because it's not necessarily the bank. So the lessor buy the car. 
and the lessor leads it to the company, which is us. So who owns the car? The bank. Okay, the arrangement is the bank owns the car and leads it to us. We will use the car and the car has got five years. So we're going to use it for five years. Maintenance, everything will be borne by us. Okay, now. so we can direct the use of the car, whether we want to keep it in the office, we want to use it, can pass it to the staff, can sell it, anything. So we have control over the car. Maintenance, everything bought by us. But it's owned by who? The bank. Legally, it's owned by the bank. So can we recognize this car as our asset? By applying substance over form? In substance, who drives the car? Me. Who directs the use of the car? Me. Because I can I can say, okay, this is for you, you for you to use one, one month. For you to use one month. I can even sell it. I can even keep it aside, put it aside. So I have a direct uh, control over the use of the car. So maintenance I have to bear. Is this similar to you owning a car? Yeah, you can have direct on the use of the car. You have to pay for the maintenance, everything. But do you own the car? No. So question, should I recognize as my asset? Yes. Answer, yes. Because we apply substance over form. In substance, I actually own the car, but I, legally I don't own because I can direct use of the car. I bear the cost and I enjoy the benefits. Similar to the owner of the car. Therefore, I should recognize in my book as mine. Okay. Legally, it's not mine. Okay, no? That's why we have substance over form. Uh, commercial substance over the legal form. We don't look at legality. Okay, we look at the substance of the contract. Okay. So this is the uh, two examples. We have many more. But the one more difficult. We come into that later. Oh, uh, I normally give one more example, consolidating understanding. Okay, oh, assuming we are in overseas, it has to be overseas because not, not a lot in Malaysia. <laughs> overseas, this is my girlfriend. Okay, we have been together for many years. We have kids together. Okay, now we even have um joint account whereby we contribute every month. And this joint account is help us to pay our housing loan, car loan, whatever. Any function we go together. But we are not we are not married yet, as in we haven't really signed the one the okay. The, well, okay. <laughs> so now now I want to introduce to you how how should I introduce her to you? If I were to apply substance over form? She's my wife. Ah, she's my wife. Okay now. So legally we are not we haven't signed the the voila. Yeah, the marriage certificate and form. <clears throat> so legally we are not husband and wife, but are we now uh, doing things what a husband and wife would do? Yes, we have joint account, we have go functions together, everything. So I should by applying substance form over form, I should introduce to you. That's my wife. Faithful representation. Okay, now, so we don't look at the legality. Okay, we look at the substance of the So, that's one. Um, one more, sorry. Like this this one here, we know is a table. Lah. But I buy this thing here, this table here, I buy it for 1000 and I put it as a uh, car. I put it as a car. So, this one here can be used to write on it. Okay, table. It is placed in a classroom for us so that we can write flat. And then it can be carried around. It cannot catch anybody. But I, I call it a car. Can I? Cannot. Lah. Okay, you can call it whatever, but we have to look at the substance. A car is whereby we can use. We can fetch from one area to the other. So you call it a car up to you, but it's still never a car to be recognized in my book. We have got a characteristic of a table. We must recognize as table. Okay, no, no matter what you call it, no matter what you call it, redeemable or whatever, yeah, it is a liability recognized by it. Okay. Substance of form. So meaning on this one involves a lot of judgment. Okay, you have to look at the contract. In practice means uh, you have to look at the contract. Okay, this one you have this characteristic, you have this characteristic. Okay, this is that. So faithful representation is part of faithful representation, faithful to the user. Next.
Okay, meaning qualitative, we have fundamental. Fundamental characteristic. Relevance. We have a faithful representation. This one just a summary. Summary, right? Faithful, right? Uh, relevance, we know, is capable of making a difference to the decision of the user, and then it must be have a predictive value and a complementary or both. And we have six examples. Explain for already. Materiality is one of the characteristic of relevance. Faithful, we have completeness, uh, neutral, free from error, substance over. And we have two example here. Okay, means uh, fundamental is very important characteristic. Next one will be enhancing qualitative characteristic. V cut. Yeah. V C U T. How to memorize? You have the V? <laughs> cut. V cut. So V is your verifiability. Cut is your C comparability, understandability, and timeliness. Meaning, uh, if we have this characteristic, even better. It will enhance further the quality of this financial statement. You cannot enhancing qualitative. Enhance further if you have this characteristic. Earlier, relevance and faithful, that one is fundamental, very important characteristic. With this four, it will improve further the characteristic. Okay? So what are they? V is verifiability. So we can see here, verifiability means different knowledgeable <coughs> as well as independent observer, they can reach consensus. Consensus means like majority, agree in agreement, not necessarily must be complete agreement, consensus. Okay? Different knowledgeable, independent observer, they can reach consensus. In a particular depiction of faithful representation. Example, uh, let's say, a certain figure. Uh, you know, certain figure, you know, when it comes to financial statement, a lot of judgment, a lot of estimation, provision, depreciation, better, all these are provision, estimation. If different knowledgeable, different observer, independent observer, they can come to an agreement, yeah, this figure is acceptable. So this figure is verifiable. It's like invoice. I say I got a sales of one million. Yeah, this is my invoice, one million. So this income of one is verifiable. But of course, when we talk about estimation, majority agree to the estimation, okay, verifiable. Okay. V. Cut will be C. Comparability. Comparability. Compare to last year. Compare to different company. Yeah. Similar information about other entity means company A, U compare with company B. It can be 2018 compared to 2017. So can comparability as in compare to other company or it can be compare same company but different year. Okay, comparability. To achieve comparability or to improve comparability there must be consistency. Consistency in what? Our accounting policy. If you apply first in, first out, 5 4, 5 4, 5 4, 5 4, we can compare. Okay, now, if one year you apply 5 4, second year weighted average, 5 4, 5 4, weighted average, no consistency. Difficult to compare. Okay, same thing. Uh, straight line, straight line, then suddenly reducing balance, no consistency, difficult to compare. So, to improve comparability, 
con there must be consistency in application of your counting policy. Okay. V cut U. Understandability. It must be understandable by users who have reasonable knowledge. Okay, uh, financial statement. Um, you talk to, let's say, someone who has not learned accounts before. No matter how simplified, they want to understand all right. So you can never achieve understandability with that. That is why understandability means uh, it must be understandable with by someone with reasonable knowledge. Then yes, they have the quality. Okay, no? Then next thing, when you mention here the word complex, uh, so we have one standard example, deeper tax. It's a very complex uh, standard. So it has to be disclosed. But when it's disclosed, uh, many users won't understand. Then it won't achieve this understandability. So if I do not disclose this, then a lot of us will understand. Okay, now, so question is, since here they say we must got understandability here, in that case, we don't disclose uh, so we can improve understandability. Can we do that? Cannot. Understandability does not give you the license to omit even uh, those complex issues. If you have to disclose, you must disclose. You don't use it as a license, ah, I don't want to disclose something because nobody wants that. Okay, no? So that's why you see it here. Uh, while some phenomena are inherently complex and cannot be made easy to understand, to exclude such information will be incomplete. Remember, one of the characteristics, we must be complete. So, must, no matter how complex. And last one is timeliness. Timeliness, it must be timely for the user to make decision. Meaning, the information must be up to date. Timely. In our financial report, we have won a contract and the contract was won like three years ago. Too late. The information is not timely, no quality. Information must be timely. Okay, for user to make decision. So we have the cut done. Okay. So chapter three, qualitative characteristic, everything is spelled out in the conceptual framework. So user, I mean People are asking we can use it as a guideline of what constitutes as high quality financial statement. Okay, not just like the car. Everything is clear. Okay. So today all theory, no calculation. Chapter 4. Underlying assumption. Our underlying assumptions is the going constant assumption. Going concern means uh, the assumption that we make is our finance, our company will be continuing in operation in the foreseeable future. Company will still be in operation in the foreseeable future. We make this assumption when we prepare our financial statement. Okay, example. Company is still a going concern. Means okay or not okay? Yeah, uh, company is a going concern. So company is okay lah. They will be operation in foreseeable future. Not SFP, non current asset. I have a PPE. One thousand. Current asset, inventory, 800, receivable, 300, bank, 400. So I put it all in one line. Huh? So asset, asset, 
total will be one, two, five. Then my liability, I put it here as a asset minus liability. So current liability, trade table, let's say it is 300. 500. Uh, loan, non-current liability, 1000. Liability we minus. So we have 1005, I left with 1000 net asset. Asset minus liability, net asset. Equity will be ordinary share, uh, 1000. Balance. Of course, we got retained earnings and all that. Okay, keep it as nothing. Company is no longer a going concern. Means got problem. Why? Maybe due to legal case. Someone sue me. If I lose, we yeah, are going to close shop. Okay. Uh, expiry of license. Franchise withdrawal of franchise license. Okay, not expiry of licensing. Okay, license. It can be due to bad of bad uh what can I say? bad business uh, Okay, due to uh business condition operation uh, due to bad okay, uh, operation wise uh, okay negative cash flow okay mismanagement so many reason why company may go uh may not be no, uh I mean a going concern so if the company is no longer a going concern means they are closing down in the possible future. Let's take it as three months. Okay, it can be any month, uh, within three months. Uh. So closing down in three months. SAP, same company, same asset and liability. How should I present them? I should present them on breakup basis. If no longer going concern, it should be on a breakup or liquidation basis. Means how? Closing down, very cold, is it? Huh? Huh? Yeah, over there, I can control. Now, after that, you can own again. Breakup basis means my financial statement will not, SAP will no longer have current, non current. Everything becomes current. Closing down in three months. So, no more current asset, non current asset, everything becomes asset. And I got a PPE. Of course, I buy 1000 a land and uh, no depreciation. So, I, since I'm closing now in three months' time, I will definitely sell off my land. How much do you think you can, I can sell it for? 800 post sale, normally sell lower. So, if you can sell it for 800, please record 800. No more current, non current inventory. The reason why I have to close up because operation is very bad. Okay, my inventory are all mostly outdated. If can sell, I want to sell this. And do you think I can sell above it? No. So, how much do you think I can sell it for? Sorry. 400. So, you put that as 400. It becomes 4. <coughs> Receivable, some, the reason is some with it refuse to pay, pay late, they take advantage, purposely going to pay, how much you think is recoverable? 100. I have to make a provision. Alright, off by that. Bank, 400. 400. Even <laughs> Okay, so asset, 917. Okay, still got liability. Current liability, are no more current, non-current. Liabilities, Trade paper, unless they give me discount, otherwise I still have a liability of 5. Same thing with bank, unless I can negotiate discount or longer repayment, otherwise I still have to pay 1000. One so my net asset now reduced to 200. Ordinary share were 1000, means I make a loss. Accumulated losses, 800 lah has to be because the balance is 2. Where did the 800 come from? Yeah, 1000 reduced to 800 down by 2, down by 4, and down by 2. Yeah, down by 8. All these are in payment right off as expenses. 
same company, same asset, same liability, but the amount, the presentation, very different. One is a going concern assumption, whereby we assume the company is a positive, uh, is a what, uh, is a going concern. The other one, when the company is no longer a going concern, whereby we have to prepare them on a breakup basis. You, cannot, you can't sell 1,000, please don't record 1,000. Fit full representation. Okay? Then, uh, when you are, or last time during your, your diploma time, when you prepare your question, ask you to prepare SPL, SFP. Did the question ask, prepare SFP for the financial statement 31st December 2013? Please assume the company is a going concern. Did they specifically ask you to do this? Or did they mention in the question? No. Why? Because we always assume the company is a going concern. So we use this format. Okay. Same thing for company. When we prepare financial statement for company, we always assume company is a going concern. We apply this concept. Unless we have some indicator that tell us otherwise, then we have to check. Is this company still a going concern or not? If no indicator, use this assumption. Okay, now. So indicator will be you look at a financial statement only. Okay, negative cash flow, keep making losses, and then many, many more. Then auditor will come in and check, hey, how any plan or not to overturn this one, but no plan, legal case, we're going to lose. Okay, lah. in that case, I have to prepare the Okay. Okay. Done. Chapter, uh, sorry, for underlying assumption only. Huh? Now, next one will be element. Element will be A, L, E. Asset, liability, equity. Income, expenses, five. So, when we have element, asset, liability, equity, income, and expenses. element. Of course, ALE is in your SFP. Income expenditure is in your SPR. So we're going to look at the definition for all this. Important one will be this tool, like SFP. First one, asset. Definition for asset. A resources controlled by the entity means the company. As a result of past event from which future economic benefits are expected to flow to entity. Did they mention the resources own? No need to be owned. Substance over form, you control, yeah, with this asset. Okay, no? This is a definition for asset, past event, future economy, past and future. Means that if the asset, I control the asset which I purchased yesterday, purchased last month, last two years, last three years, okay, in which this asset will provide me with future economic benefit, yeah, it is my asset. Okay, like machinery, it can be used to generate future economic benefits. Okay, now, sometimes I may buy a machine, or I buy something, device, that will help me to reduce my cost. That is also considered as future economic benefit. Not necessarily must be income. Okay? The resources that help us to reduce cost, that is also implying future economic benefit. Okay? Um, this is important. Lah. I mean, you have to know because higher level, is this asset, is this liability, always come back to this definition. Okay, this one is specifically to explain what you mean by past event, future economic benefits. You want to skip, it's okay. Okay, too many. Huh? So, important definition. Next one. Liability. So, I keep some space here because I'm going to give you some example here. Liability is present obligation. Present, current. Present obligation of the entity arising from past event, same thing, past event. And the settlement of which, uh, when we settle this obligation, 
you result in an outflow. Okay. One example, trade paper. Trade paper, we know is a liability. So does it fit into this definition? Trade paper, I buy, I now have obligation to pay. So that is a present obligation, 1 million. I have an obligation. Why? Because I bought it last week. Okay. I have. If I were to settle this obligation, it will result in an outflow. Yeah. Definition for liability. Okay. Now we expand further here. The obligation here. It can be legal obligation. It can be constructive obligation. Example, trade paper, loan, tax. TP is trade paper, loan, tax. I purchase goods, must pay. It's legal obligation. Do not pay, they will sue me. Loan, I borrow from the bank, same thing. Tax, I make profit, I must pay tax. Otherwise, government will sue me. So all these are legal obligations. Constructive obligation, example, e.g. Bonus. Refund. Two examples. Of course, you have a few more. Huh? So, bonus refund constructive obligation it has to be due to PPPP, past practice, published policy. It can be due to announcement. Past practice, publish policy. Announcement of public announcement. Okay, the announcement will be which raise valid huh? expectation. Raise valid expectation. Okay. On other party, lah. Okay, become clear. Other party. Then we have constructive obligation. So explain here. Last five year, company declared bonus to my staff two months. Last four year, two months. Three year, two year, one year. Two month, two month, two month bonus. Okay, not. So if you are my staff. Do you have the expectation that I will pay you two months or so this year? Why do you have the expectation? Because of the past practice. So my past practice, as a result, I have raised a valid expectation on the part of your side, means the other party. So now I have an obligation. And that obligation is a constructive obligation. It's not legally binding, but it's because of my action, past practice. Okay. Therefore, I must recognize a liability on this bonus. Okay. Refund, same thing. Uh, my policy is no refund. But somehow one customer come to me and they ask for refund. Okay, like one customer I refund. Another customer refund, 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 refund. As a result, my customer now they have the expectation that I will refund whenever they ask for. Okay, due to my past practice. My customer has got a valid expectation. So each time when I sell, I will have an obligation to refund. So I must recognize. Okay, so these are constructive obligations. Publish policy is like you already published. Of course, you are you have no re, no legal requirement. To one example, normally came out in the past year question. 
no requirement to repair the damage done by me. So normally the example is like, okay, there's an oil spill, okay, there's a damage to the environment due to my action, my asset or whatever. So no obligation to repair. However, I have a published policy that I will make good of all the damage. I'm going to repair all the damage, I'm going to clean up the area, I publish out, or I even make an announcement about it. Okay, because of my action here, I now have an obligation to clean up. Okay, therefore I must recognize the liability. Okay, so definition asset setup, definition liability setup. Uh, offsetting asset and liability not allowed. If it's offsetting 100, offsetting 80, the still 20 still looks okay. Lah. I mean, your profit is about 1,000, 20,000, 50,000, 1 million. Imagine this one, 1,000 asset, uh, 100 million asset, 180 million liability, but in your book, you show only 2 million asset net. Okay, now you're hiding away the liability. A liability is an obligation. So that's why no netting off is allowed for asset. Equity, straightforward. We know A minus L equals to equity. Asset minus liability equity. So the definition is also asset minus liability here. Residual interest means the balance. Residual means the balance. Balance of what? Asset. Deduct liability. The balance of asset minus liability. Put it simply, total asset minus total liability. Income and expenses. Increase in economic benefit in the form of inflow or enhancement of asset or decrease in liability. Other than no, inflow enhancement, other than contribution contribution from equity participant equity participant is like your share capital have you increase this one is decrease it should be five like one two three four five okay this one is okay Zero. <laughs> so, yeah. Zero, one, two, three, four. Should be one, two, three, four, five. Huh? Now, uh, income. Increase in economic benefit. And the increase will result in an inflow. Example, cash sales. Okay. If no inflow, never mind. Enhancement of asset means increase in asset. Example, credit sales. I sell on credit receivable. It can also increase in current benefit, but not nothing to inflow or enhancement of asset, but it's a decrease in liability. Liability down, good. But not what? Other than contribution by equity participant. If my shareholder pump in more money into the business, I receive money, correct? It's an inflow. But is share capital introduced by owner and income? It is not an income. So income contribution from equity participant is not an income. Okay. So with zero, one, two, three, four, the expenses will be opposite. Decrease in economic benefit, outflow, depletion of asset means decrease in asset. Incurrence of liability means in increase in liability other than distribution number four distribution will be dividend dividend is not an expenses right then zero okay direct opposite so we just we, we need to know this in case we have a 
MCQ question. Yeah, definition of asset, definition of liability, then they get what? Increase in asset, enhancement of asset, depletion of asset, eh, which is the word. That's why you have to know. So, five elements, five definitions. Asset, resources, control, as a result of past event, future economic benefit. Liability is present obligation, as a result of past event, and then we have a outflow. And how many obligations? Two, legal and constructive. Uh, equity is asset minus liability, income and expenses. Okay, zero to four, zero to four. Okay. So, uh, next one, recognition. Recognition, we look at these two enough. It's an important uh, criteria, but exam not important. Lah. It's an important criteria for recognition, but they won't ask you, hey, what are the two? Lah? No, lah. Okay, no? So the important rec uh, criteria for recognition, just now is definition. Now is when should we recognize the asset? Just now is what is asset? And when can I recognize? I should recognize in my book as asset when it is probable. Probable means more than 50%. The standard did not mention how many percent. But probable means what is the likelihood is definitely more than 50% chance. Okay. Probable that future economic benefit associated with the item will flow to the entity and it can be measured with reliability. Or sometimes we mention them measured reliably. Measured with reliability. Measured reliably. Can I? Same meaning. Two. Probable measured reliability. What is an asset? Resources controlled by an entity, future economic benefit. Can I recognize? You can. If it's probable that this asset will generate future economic benefit to the entity and it can be measured reliably. Okay, no? So, uh, example, it cannot be measured reliably. Asset. You heard of uh, intangible assets? Intangible asset we know generally means cannot be touched, cannot be seen. Okay, it can, one of them is goodwill. Okay, no? so how much is my goodwill? Let's say we talk about, um, let's say we think of a college. Okay, no? ACC, yeah, we did. We think of uh, hospitality, KDU, example. Lah. So they have their goodwill there. So for elite, probably is worth 1 million. My another director thought it's 2 million. Another one thought it's 3 million. Can we recognize? Cannot. Okay, why? To recognize, we must be able to be measured reliably. So 1 million, 2 million is not a cost to me. And it cannot be measured reliably. We don't recognize this intangible asset. Okay, we know it's our asset, but we cannot recognize it. Okay, because this is the recognition criteria. Alright, this one no need to read all this probable, what is reliability, you can skip. Measurement, next one, last one on conceptual framework. We have one, two, three, four. Measurement is more on application, so this one you can skip. Just know there are four ways to measure. How do you link? Uh, you see, uh, I want to recognize this as my asset because I meet the two criteria probable and measure reliably. So I meet the recognition criteria. Question is how much? Then measurement will come in money. Okay. So we have one, two, three, four is more on application measurement. Wait, uh, let me stop first. Oh, one hour. My boss said try to make it like half an hour, half an hour. 